In the aquarium, cryptochorine are confronted with large supplies of nitrate, which they do not recognize since they cannot differentiate in their intake of nutrients. The nitrate is taken in by the plant in large amounts, but is then stored in the tissue as useless. Overfertilization with nitrates, for example, is considered to be one of the major causes of cryptochorine rot. For these plants, the smallest chemical or physical change in their environment can have catastrophic effects. Hello everybody, this is Dr. Novak again. This plant you're looking at, cryptochorine. Cryptochorine is a beginner's plant. This is cryptochorine uh, when dent I uh, red is how it will be listed. The one over here is the green variety. Now, each one of these will grow a little different in height. The undulati uh, leaves, you see how they're wavy, uh, where the one next to it doesn't really have that much of the wavy leaves. So, these are your very typical beginner plants. Now these that I bought are experimental plants. The first thing that could happen to these plants when you buy them is they could start rotting away. Very common for new hobbyists to say I bought these plants and they rotted away. Well, cryptochorine is one of those plants that does not take nitrogen as a food source. It takes nitrogen in and if it does, it will eventually cause crip rot because it doesn't know how to utilize the nitrogen like other plants, and it hasn't learned how to use, utilize the nitrogen. Therefore, the nitrogen stays within the leaves and starts crip rot. So it's a plant that really needs very low nitrogen to really flourish. But this could be found out on the internet, this can be found out in books, it, it's, it's nothing that hasn't been written about thousands of times, right? So we look at a plant like this, and this is usually considered to be a easy-to-grow beginner's plant. And it's everybody will tell you that at stores and everything else. And I'm going to read you right from the tag that the plant came with, because they all say it's the same. It says, easy-to-grow plant with olive green arrow shaped leaves, tolerant of many types of water. How to grow. Plant in medium light in the front of the aquarium. Prefers water temperatures between 72 and 82 degrees. And this is right, this little tag I got is right from the grower that comes with the plant. Now this is what they tell hobbyists to put in front of the aquarium and what temperature. Now, when I used to buy these plants years ago, I'm talking about maybe in the 60s and 70s, uh, they died. Okay, and I used to think, ah, oh, for an easy plant, they really don't do very good. And... Uh, you had to find out, well, why weren't they growing in my tank? And why are they considered to be so easy? Of course, as time goes on, you find out, well, uh, my nitrates were too high. And uh, um, I couldn't get, because this is a particular plant that gets a lot of its nutrients from the root system. Okay. More so than the leaves it will get most of its nutrients through the root system. The thing they don't tell you about this innocuous li little plant here, and we all buy them, everybody buys them, is under the right conditions, this could be a problematic plant. It is an invasive plant, and it should not be placed 
in the front of an aquarium. It should be placed in the back of the aquarium. Now, I know some are going to disagree with me, and I'll, I understand why. But let me explain myself. Back in about all oh, the 80s now, we'll start going into the 80s, I did some experiments and research on this plant. And two things I was trying to find out is one was with heating cables, and the other one was with a plenum. Okay. And I found out that by using heat heating cables or using a plenum, the plant really grew. I mean, it was not a plant you put in the front of the tank. This plant gets huge. Now, unlike, let's say, I'm going to give this an example, like an Amazon sword. You put an Amazon sword in the background, it grows huge, it makes a nice show plant, correct? You could almost say the cryptocorin, or the crypts as they call them, um, is a show plant. And I know some may be out there disagreeing with me saying, no, it's not a show plant. It's, it's a plant you're going to put in the front. When I have given this plant the right conditions, such as with heating cables that will actually move water through the substrate or with a plenum, uh, I have found within a year's time, and I have pictures of this plant in aquariums, it grows profusely. It is unbelievable it will start sending out runners and on my 90 gallon tank uh, there must have been a little piece of this crip this red crip here that I pulled out of this 20 gallon tank that you're looking at here and I moved it over to the 90 gallon and uh, when I took this 20 gallon and took the substrate out the stones that were in here and mixed it with the sand for the 90, uh, for the 40 gallon breeder maybe a little bit of root and plant uh, stayed in the substrate and when I mixed it you couldn't see it of course and it didn't exist but one day it started growing and all of a sudden I had a new plant well today that plant has now sent out two runners and is growing two separate plants. Now this is in a tank using a plenum without CO2, with adequate light. So the crip now is starting to grow, and it's growing slowly because the tank's been up now nine months, but it started out from literally nothing. It didn't start out as a plant like this. It started out from nothing and grew from a root. However, the reason I'm making this video is to warn people that this particular plant become very invasive in your aquarium. And it doesn't talk about the plant very much when you see pictures of how large it can get, how it can multiply, and what kind of damage it can do to your aquarium. Now, you never hear anything about that. Nobody ever talks about a cri oh, crypts. Well, what are you talking about? Is it, you know, these plants, like this crypt you're looking at or this one, I have some of these plants that are over 18 inches tall. They have multiplied now maybe 70, 80 times. That little innocuous little plant you see have multiplied so many times that they have taken over the whole front of the aquarium, and they are so tall, you can't see anything that's even behind them. That's how tall they are. Like I said, they're 16 to 18 inches tall. That's not a plant you put in front of your aquarium. That's a tank, you, that's a plant you put in the back of your aquarium. But of course, that is with using CO2, adequate light, and a substrate that they like. Basically, these are very easy to grow plants. If you give them a substrate they like with some iron, they're going to grow. If you give them CO2, then they're really going to grow. The, it's absolutely terrible that they are still advocating to this day 
that this is a plant that you can put in the front of your aquarium. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean, that this is not a plant. Remember, we got the red, we got the green, and I'm going to show you both of them. Now, this has happened to me several times. Uh, okay, what are you looking at? You're looking at the green crypt. The one I showed you that's that I just bought, and this is in the 90 gallon. This crip is almost 18 inches tall, reaching the very top. What people don't understand is, like they say in books and everything, that this could be placed in the front of your aquarium, which it is. The, look at this. When you back off, this is what you're going to get when you use a crip with a plenum. Look at that. The fish can't even swim in there. It's taken over every plant and what used to be behind it. You can't even see what's behind this crip. This is, this is within a year, little over a year. This has grown like this. As we back off, that's one little plant. That's what that is. Just one little plant. I plant it in the 90-gallon aquarium. Then we come over to the red. And look at this. It has multiplied. Remember, this is one little plant. And here everyone says to put it in the front of the aquarium. And it keeps multiplying and multiplying. As you can see at the bottom here, how it multiplies over here. It's multiplying behind the Anubius that you see here. So these two plants are literally dominating the aquarium. And this is a little over a year. But I wanted to show you that. This one's nice and red, so it's a beautiful plant. Look, it's nice and red. You see the green veins in it. But look how big it is getting. And as it grows bigger and bigger, it just keeps multiplying and multiplying and sending runners out and will literally take over your aquarium. And when you back up off the aquarium, you can just see. Now, how is this plant considered to be a plant you put in front of the tank? I mean, this thing's had to multiply. It's going all the way to the back. It's now creeping over all the way in the front. Within two years' time, this thing is going to dominate the entire aquarium. It is probably going to come over this way and be intertwined with the Anubius there and then come in with this plant, which is already going to the left into the Anubius, which you can't see the plant. But these plants are tall. They're big. They're huge. They're just dominating the aquarium. So this is something I wanted to bring up. It's never told to you about these crypts that if grown under ideal conditions, okay, and with patience, they're going to get huge. They are going to literally take over your aquarium. I mean, this is how, this is dense. Look at look at how dense this is. They are the crypt is just jammed in there with tons and tons. Look at this, just growing one after another with spreading out more and more root systems. And this is exactly why I told people you're going to end up with a jungle tank. But if you don't want to do all, all the maintenance of constantly trimming plants and pulling them out and, and guarding your plants, and you're kind of like me, you just put the plants in, you get a little lazy and you don't want to deal with it, uh, you're going to end up with these crypts looking like this. They're just going to get... And the green in the crypt, remember that green and red 
like you see here, it's caused because of iron. That's because when I made this tank, I put laterite in it. And now those roots are getting to that laterite and making the plants nice and green and beautiful, as you see here. But they all started out as nothingness plants that uh, most people would say, oh, this is going to look real good. And I have seen, and I'll admit to it, that people have crypts, and they're not that big. They're maybe five, six inches tall. Uh, they look bushy. But in reality, this has happened to me several times where the crypts have just taken over the tank. Look at this. It's literally taken over the tank. And this one is taken over the tank on the other side. So I have to try to move the feeding ring, which is on the left side, to the center because I'm running out of space. Now, I know some people are going to say, yeah, I go in there and you can thin it out. But the point of it is, is I wanted to show you, when you buy these crypts, and it says front of the tank, you better think twice about front of the tank. With the right conditions, these things will grow huge. They will multiply. And think about it. This growth that you're looking at, this is only a little over a year. The growth you see over here. If you would have saw the plant, uh, like I just showed in the beginning of this video, uh, that's what it looked like. It looked like a little bitty plant, like in a pot. And look at that. A little over a year, and it's definitely keeps multiplying and getting taller and taller and taller. And it seems like the mother plant, which would be the plant in the, in the back, the very back here, that is the mother plant that, or was it this one right here? Anyhow, the, it seems like the mother plant is the one that literally starts sending out all the runners for the crypt to grow. And uh, I, I just thought I'd make this video as a warning. For those of you who are using the plenums, and you're setting them up correctly. If you're using CO2 for your plants, you may be in for a surprise with some of these plants that you used to put in the front of your tank, and they are going to grow at an unbelievable rate. And this is only a year's worth of growth. A little over a year. This tank's been set up over a year, but... Patience, like I said, is a virtue, you know, that just can't be bought. And uh, when I saw this, and then I saw the goldfish tank, where that is already starting to multiply, it really, I would have to say, which nobody ever tells the hobbyists, that crypts are invasive species of plant in an aquarium. They will completely dominate, and I've had that happen. They will completely dominate the aquarium. In time, they will just become, your tank will just become nothing except crypts. Because if you keep your nitrates low to non-existence and phosphates, and you give them what they want in their root system, they take off like a banshee. Once they develop a good root system, they take off and they just start multiplying, sending runners out all over the place. They remind me of uh, a plant that's that's considered to be invasive called bishop's weed. Now, it, it reminds you of like baby's breath, bishop weed, when it flowers. But it's called bishop's weed because it sends out these runners and it just, it's, it's invasive. Once it gets into your garden, um, it, it just keeps going and going and going, the Bishop's Weed does. So this is a plant, I would have to say, this is a very invasive plant for your aquarium. And people, I don't think, I don't know if they get to this point where they're realizing that these crypts I mean, that crypt is touching almost the top of the water. Well, that's 18 inches, how big it grew. How do you put a plant that's going to grow 18 inches and become this dense 
in the front of your aquarium. It's good if you put it in the back of your aquarium. Oh, that would look neat. But as you see, it's just being pressed against the glass. And you can see the red crypt here. It's starting to multiply to the point where it is going to be pressed against the glass. So this is a little slower than the other one, yet they both are grown profusely and are definitely a plant that does not like nitrates. Remember that. Nitrates will kill it. So if you have an invasive species like this crypt, you want to kill it, put some nitrates in your tank. A lot of nitrates and before long you're going to get crypt rot, rot and it will just rot away. So I just wanted to show you this because nobody ever talks about crypts being, first of all, a very large aquatic plant and invasive. No one ever says that to you that, oh, by the way, that's a very invasive plant. And you may want to think twice about it of where you place it in your aquarium because it can grow to look like this. Nothing but a jungle. I mean, that, that, that's even on the side of the aquarium. Here's the side. Look at that. Uh, I can't get it because of the window. It's not coming out very good. But um, it's growing a foot into the, the tank. And if it's growing a foot into the tank, and this is only a two-foot deep tank, you can imagine over time it will dominate the complete aquarium as the years go by. This will just be a dominating plant in this aquarium. Something to think about. But of course, I'm going to be honest with you, I've seen Crip, and uh, they're not that big. They're not as big as these. But I warned everybody that if you use a plenum, and it worked the same with heating cables, because fluids were moving in and out of the substrate. So I noticed the same thing with heating cables on some of my very old aquariums, how big the Crip got. But this is just proof that they can become invasive. So when you buy that uh, crypt, remember, under the right conditions, this is what you're going to end up with in a year. Something like this. That was one plant. Only one. So um, that's something to think about. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I hope you kind of learned something. If you've never seen Crip grow like that, then they're not being grown correctly. Anyhow, until next time, happy fish keeping.